I was a dancer. I was on Broadway for 10 years. And I noticed that there weren't too many female stand-ups. And there were loads of female dancers. So I said, I want to be more in control of my career and what I do for a living. And I always think of myself as the Avon lady of entertainment, because I go directly to the audience. Oh, yes, do something there. It's a different order than I'm used to. Because I usually do an hour and a half in Las Vegas, and I'm not doing it, so I've had to piece together different bits of my act and just put them in, and then try to remember. That's what I love about stand-up, is there's no one who comes between you and a joke. Hello. Do you need me for anything, darling? No, no, thank you. Okay, I'm getting a little... Okay, I'm going to go get my dress on. All right. Thank you very, 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 very much. Yeah, you're very, 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 Exciting. It's showbiz these things. In the words of Bob Fosse, it's showtime. I started out uh, when the earth was cooling, and uh, I believe I opened for Mark Twain. They all laughed when I said I wanted to be a stand up comic. Well, they're not laughing now. I'm sweating like Jay Leno trying to come up with it. I'm sweating like jokes. I work uh, a lot, maybe 10 weeks a year in Las Vegas. I open for uh, bands, which I love to do. I want to host the Academy Awards. I mean, that's what I want to do. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. What? Your, your chest hair. Gray? Your kind is white. They were calling every, all the talent by name, except for you. They said the guy without the shirt. I'm back to where the freaking gorilla. <laughs> the stage lady was just in hysterics. She goes, I like your outfit. They go, hey, I kept my pants. So I do do something else. I produce TV shows. I started that when my friend Roseanne uh, Barr got her show, and my other friend Robert Wall got a show called Arliss, and they both hired me, and I did both shows at the same time and wound up the executive producer of Roseanne. I was painting a house across the street from the comedy store, and it's an amateur night. And I was always a funny kid. Wrote myself six minutes of stand-up comedy that afternoon I was painting this house. And I walked on stage that evening, fell in love. Backstage, I mean, it's like 110 degrees. They say it's a dry heat. Well, you try and convince your testicles about that and this on stage with the lights on on your face. I just hope these people appreciate it. They're a good crowd. This is going to be a long night. Well, we're going to have fun. It's going to be a great show. And I want to do this every night of my life for the rest of my life. job. <laughs> this economy, I don't know what's going on with this economy. My investments are so terrible. I have to tell you, at this point, I have a 401 not okay. <laughs> but it'll get better. That's what everyone says. It'll get better, and I know it will. We just have to stay alive for 800 years. <laughs> now, I'm no genius, but as far as I can figure out, it all began because the banks loaned our money, money that we made, to people who couldn't pay it back, correct? Yeah. Okay, here's my premise. It was our money. We made it. Shouldn't they have asked us first? Yeah. 
I think they should have called me up and said, hello, Rita, this is the bank. We're thinking of loaning your money to an idiot. Are you in? Well, there's always a silver lining. The bad news is the world is ending. The good news is everything's on sale. And who do you trust with your money? I went to an investment counselor. You know what this guy had the nerve to ask me? Wait, do you hear this question? What's your risk tolerance? What money are you comfortable losing? I said, your money. I have too many credit cards. I lost one. I didn't even notice. I noticed when I got that bill. Oh, it was so much less. <laughs> I'm letting him keep it. I'm saving money. <laughs> and of course, now they not only steal your credit card, they steal your identity. I think if they steal your identity, they should have to visit your parents. <laughs> many of you know I am a mommy now. I have, I have the most wonderful little girl in the whole wide world. She's nine years old, though I'm still trying to lose the weight. It's so weird because we adopted. And it took us a couple tries. The first time we really messed up the paperwork, we accidentally adopted a highway. Can I tell you what happened? Because this is something many people don't talk about, and it happened to me. I tried to get pregnant, but I couldn't, and it turned out it was because when I was younger, I, I had spent a lot of time in jacuzzis, and I'd accidentally hard-boiled my eggs. <laughs> what you gonna do? talked about getting a surrogate, the doctor explained what would have to happen is that the doctor would have to take the eggs out of a young girl and fertilize them with my husband's sperm. And my husband said, well, wait a second, why do you have to take the eggs out? <laughs> so we adopted. And I was a little worried would I have maternal instincts? But you don't have to worry about that because once you look at that baby, you, you have feelings that are so deep you didn't even know you had them. I never thought that someone could take something out of their nose <laughs> and, and hand it to me while I was eating dinner. <laughs> and I would say, thank you. She's growing up too fast. I remember the first picture she ever drew of me. It was so sweet. I said, that's so lovely, honey. Maybe next time you could draw mommy's breast just a little higher. <laughs> I remember the first time I bought her a helium balloon and she let it go in the house and it flew to the ceiling. And she looked up at me with her big blue eyes. And she said, mommy, get it. And I got up on a ladder and I got it down for her. And she was so happy. And then we were outside. Yes, she let it go, and she looked up at me again, this time tears streaming down her cheeks as the balloon flew into the universe, and she said, Mommy, get it. And I just couldn't admit to her there are some things in this world that Mommy, mommy can't do for her. So I said, ask Daddy to get it. You learn so much about yourself when you have a baby. You know what I learned? I learned that I don't know the words to any song. It's so humiliating singing to her. A, B, C, D, la, la, la. <laughs> you know what's changed about toys since I was a kid? Nothing comes assembled anymore. Isn't that true of everything, though? Nothing comes assembled anymore. OK, I've got a question. I think it's a good one. I think you're going to like it. Are you ready? Yeah. There are so many people out of work in America. Can't some of them find jobs putting shit together? <laughs> My husband's so smart, but that's not what he does. He bought her one of these tricycles you had to assemble. I didn't see him for weeks. <laughs> and she could ride it. She just had to carry a wheel.
One thing I wasn't prepared for, how much energy kids have. Oh my gosh, she's never tired. Her favorite game is hide and seek. It's our favorite game too, because we don't look for her right away. <laughs> She's good at hide and seek. She hides behind the sofa. She jumps out, scares us to death. I think when she grows up, she might be a state trooper. <laughs> of course, I am an older mother, so I worry. I worry about things, but I think we'll just connect in different ways. Like, we'll both be losing our teeth at around the same time. <laughs> Getting older can come in very, very handy. She said, Mommy, when did you get your ears pierced? And I said, when I was 13. She said, well, I want to get my ears pierced when I'm 12 because I want to do everything one year younger than you. When did you get your first cell phone? I said, when I was 46. She wanted a dog, we finally got a dog. We got her an older French poodle who used to work in an airport sniffing out fake Louis Vuittons. <laughs> and my husband said, I'll walk the dog. And my daughter said, I'll walk the dog. Guess who walks the dog? <laughs> Mommy walks the dog. Yeah, my husband walked the dog once. My neighbor came running out and asked, is Rita dead? <laughs> The world is changing so much, though. What's the world going to be like when she has children? What is she going to say to her kids? Honey, when I was a little girl, there were only three Kardashians. <laughs> and here's something so strange that happened to me the other day that I have to tell you about. She had a cold, and I went to the pharmacy to get her some children's Tylenol. And the pharmacist said, you have to give me your driver's license. And I said, why? All I want is a bottle of children's Tylenol. And he said, yes, but we have to take down your uh, number because people use an ingredient in children's Tylenol to make a drug called Oxycontin. And I said, well, thank you for having so much confidence in me. I can't even make meatloaf. <laughs> getting too strange for me. Computers are making everything so impersonal. I was on the computer the other day and a little sign came up saying, your computer might be infected. And I thought to myself, remember the good old days when you had to sleep with someone to get a virus? <laughs> My husband is techno boy. He got the iPhone, loves his iPhone, had it for a week, dropped it in the sink. <laughs> so this is not only a comedy show, this is a show where I deliver helpful hints. What you do in this case is you get a plastic bag, you fill it with, do you know what you fill it with? Rice, you've all done it too. <laughs> And you seal up the bag, and you leave it there for a few days, and the rice gradually absorbs the water, and he opened the bag up, and he can make phone calls again, but only to China. <laughs> He's rewired our whole house so we can control everything from one panel. I don't know about you. I don't have to be able to open up the garage door while I'm on the toilet. He also put in a new alarm system. He forgot the code. The police came. He wouldn't admit he'd forgotten the code. He just turned himself in. <laughs> but the world is changing so fast. Everyone has tattoos now. It's the very in thing. You must get a tattoo. And I would never get one. But luckily, on my left leg, I do have a vein in the shape of a ship. <laughs> understand tattoos when you're young because they look so cool on you when you're young. Here comes my problem. You're going to get older. They're still going to be there. And then what happens when your grandchild says, Mommy, why does Grandma have rattlesnakes on her chest? <laughs> well, little Susie, when Grandma was a teenager, she was a party slut. <laughs> and you know what? I could never be a tattoo remover. How do they keep a straight face? Wouldn't it be hard not to say, so I guess that relationship you burned into your buttocks didn't work out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> because everything is geared towards young people these days. 30 is the new 20. 40 is the new 30. And 50 is the new 80. <laughs> 
have to tell you the plight of the older women, because I, I am over 50, and um, I answered the phone the other day. It was one of these unsolicited phone calls. And the voice on the other end said, we are looking for the opinion of women of all ages. So I stayed on the phone, because I usually hang up, but I didn't, I stayed on the phone. They said, are you 18 to 29? I said, no. 29 to 39? I said, no. 39 to 49? I said, no. They hung up. <laughs> I blame advertisers. They only want to appeal to people in their 20s. They think people in their 50s have no money, and we do. We just keep having to give it to people in their 20s. <laughs> Pause, I get a hot, I get cold, I take my clothes off, I put them back on. My husband says it's like living with a schizophrenic stripper. <laughs> I think there must be some ancient physiological reason for menopause. I think a long, long time ago, when women got older, the cavemen pushed them away from the fire to make way for the younger women, and we had to develop our own internal heating systems. <laughs> My friend's having real problems. Her hot flashes are so severe, she's been banned from Baskin and Robbins. <laughs> and she's newly single. It's so hard for her. She tried online dating. I told her, I told her, you be careful. People lie about who they are. She said, Rita, I have faith in my fellow human beings. He's a divorced doctor in his 40s who wants to meet me, a billionaire ballerina who's 23. <laughs> She's trying to meet men. She went to a nightclub, started talking to a guy. You can't hear what anyone's saying in those nightclubs. She thought he said he was a lawyer on vacation. Turned out he was a voyeur on probation. <laughs> She's competing with younger women. She took up pole dancing, didn't have the stamina. Went around three times, got dizzy, threw up on the teacher. I know I'm so glad I married my husband and I. We've been married for 23 years. Yep. And people say, how do you stay married for 23 years in show business? And I tell them the truth. Our relationship is based on trust and respect and the fact that no other people ever found us attractive. <laughs> He started playing golf. I think he needed some time alone, but then I started playing too. Ha ha. <laughs> and I have to say, I'm getting better. The other day, I got a birdie. And a ducky and a fishy. And I have to tell you a little secret about me and, and golf. Can I tell you? Don't tell my husband, because he doesn't know. Can I tell you? Yeah. I don't really care if the ball goes in the hole. I don't care. I pretend to care, but I don't care. And you know why I don't care? You know why? Because it doesn't matter. That's why. <laughs> but oh, oh, it matters to him. He gets so happy when the ball goes in the hole. I want to get up early one day when we're playing golf and put a ball in each hole and tell him he did it. He'll be so happy. <laughs> Men and women, we have different needs. Women don't make obscene phone calls. You know why? Men wouldn't hang up. <laughs> I think women are more self-sufficient than men, don't you think? Yeah. If a woman is thirsty, she gets a drink. If a man is thirsty, he says, I'm thirsty. <laughs> and he waits for something to appear. <laughs> I like when my husband tries to make me think it's my idea. Want to get me a beer? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, I do! <laughs> I wanted to do something. I just couldn't figure out what it was. <laughs> and men and women, we react differently to situations. If a woman sees a mess, she cleans it up. If a man sees a mess, he announces it. Rita, the dog just threw up at the top of the stairs. Okay, I'll be there in a second. Try not to do anything about it. We 
always have pillow fights. I mean, we throw pillows at each other. We have fights about why there are so many pillows on the bed and why he's not allowed to put his head on any of them. But I've told him these are decorative pillows. These are not pillows for sleeping. These are pillows for show. And he says, yes, Rita, but we are the only two people who go into the bedroom. Who do we do the little pillow show for? And I have to be honest with you, I don't know. I only know that I love my pillows and I have to do the show. And being considered of the other person is important. Don't get me wrong, I just bought one of these new mattresses where I can roll around anywhere I want on the mattress and it doesn't disturb him. His mattress is in the other room. Because let's face it, sex is good, but sleep is fantastic. <laughs> you know what I read recently? You know what a man's most frequent sexual fantasy is? Two women together. I don't think it's because men are kinky. I think it's because men are lazy. <laughs> they say, why don't you two do it? I'll just kick back and have a beer. <laughs> Want to get me one? Now, I have to say, some people worry about my husband when I talk about him in my act, but we're so lucky that we met, and I'll tell you how we did meet. Um, he produced comedy shows, and he saw me on stage, and he hired me, and he paid me, and I married him. Thank you. But along the way, I did date a number of comedians, and uh, I'm glad I didn't marry any of them, but uh, <laughs> I don't think the marriage would have lasted for 23 minutes, but we have some funny, wonderful, inappropriate men for you tonight. And they're all, <laughs> they are all fantastic. Now, our first potential ex-husband is, <laughs> is a very lovely man. We had a talk backstage, and we realized the only thing we had in common were feet. <laughs> he's smart, he's funny, and he's never been found guilty. Please welcome David Gee. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. My name, for the record, is David Gee. That, by the way, is pronounced Gee, G-E-E. -E. I dropped the K for professional reasons. <laughs> and I am a comedian extraordinaire, fresh off my triumphant performance at Applebee's Open Mic Night in Fontana. <laughs> And it indeed is a pleasure to be here at the venerable California Theater and swing in San Bernardino. Yeah. I love this town. It's hot, though, isn't it? Yeah. Man, it's hot. It's so hot, I spent the better part of the afternoon cruising the bars trying to pick up women just to get a cold shoulder. <laughs> so. <laughs> and you'd think I'd be accustomed to it. I just uh, came in from working the week in uh, Las Vegas. And it was a bit toasty there as well, and windy. Man, it was windy. Shit, I got a toupee circling Hoover Dam right about now. <laughs> I had a great week, though, and as an added bonus, at the hotel where I was staying, they were shooting episodes of The Animal Whisperer. Now, I don't know if you know The Animal Whisperer, but he's got a show on cable, and he's incredible. He can talk to critters. He knows what animals are thinking. And I met the guy, and he was really cool. And I guess he had just interviewed Montecor, the white tiger that mauled Roy of Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> and the whisperer told me he was fascinated to learn that gay Germans taste just like chicken. <laughs> so... <laughs> Put that in your pocket, huh? Hey, do you like the movies? Yeah. I love the movies. I love the classic portrayals in movies, like Marlon Brando as the Godfather. Oh. I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Or Russell Crowe as Gladiator. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North. 
Or Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry. <sighs> well, I know what you're thinking, punk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? And one of my favorites, Clark Gable, is Rick Butler. Well, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And thank you. Do you realize that in 1939, when Gone with the Wind was released, I don't give a damn was considered racy dialogue? And I was thinking, what if some of the classic scenes of the 30s and 40s were written for today's audiences? Take that gem from Casablanca with Humphrey Bogart. Ah, now what's that you're playing, Sam? Well, stop it, I hate that motherfucking song. <laughs> ah, here's looking at you, bitch. Or how about the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz? Oh. Oh, Dorothy, that feels wonderful. Oh, oil my arms. Oil my elbows. Now pull my crank and grease my nuts. Or finally, Jimmy Stewart from It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> hey there, now, 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 Mr. Potter, you, 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 you warped, frustrated, scum lamp and shit bag, you, huh? <laughs> Kiss my ass, you limp dick son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, the possibility. Well, we have a moment or two. What can we discuss? What's going on in the news? Uh, well, you might have heard there was a big industry fire down in uh, Riverside early this morning that completely destroyed a 99 cent store. <laughs> and did tens of dollars in damage. It was... <laughs> Congratulations are in order for Larry King. Larry King has now become the first celebrity to look the same in real life as he does on The Simpsons. So, hats off to Larry. Oh, in sports, as if they don't have enough to deal with, NBA players now have another problem. They're running out of Kardashians. So. And in golf, Authorities now believe Tiger Woods was under the influence when he famously slammed into his neighbor's tree. Word is Tiger swears that isn't true. He claims the Escalade he was driving suddenly accelerated for no reason. <laughs> Typical arrogant golfer, blame it on the caddy. <laughs> you know, I love the game of golf. I suck at it, though. <laughs> I just don't play well. I, you know, as a matter of fact, I played last week at a course in Vegas called the Lakes. And I put more balls in the water than the Russian women's diving team. <laughs> That's a lot of balls. And I had a caddy. I've never had a caddy before, but it was a high-ticket charity event, so they gave me a caddy. And I had this terrible round, and I was angry and frustrated. And at the end of the day, as the guy's walking away, I said, you got to be the worst caddy in the world. He said, oh, no, no, that'd be too much of a fucking coincidence. <laughs> Turning to baseball, it was a rough season for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Tough times, man. You know, I, their, their owners are involved in a nasty divorce. It had its effect on the field and at the gate. For the first time in memory, fans weren't coming to the ballpark. You know, there were empty seats. Vin Scully, the iconic voice of the Dodgers for over 60 years. <laughs> Vinny came on and said, 
Well, hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good day to you, wherever you may be. Pull up a chair, because we've got a dandy. It's time for Dodger Baseball. And we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge tonight's paid attendance. His name is Fred. <laughs> But I think things are improving, folks. I really do. As a matter of fact, I'm so optimistic that the economy is on the rebound. Well, I've been out pricing pots to piss in. <laughs> so. Hey, and as an audience, you're a much needed tonic for me, too. I didn't get a lot of sleep. I had a woman banging on my door all night. <laughs> till I finally got up and let her out. <laughs> fucking fire tonight. <laughs> I was just kidding. I didn't have a woman at my door. I have a girlfriend. Well, at least I think so. <laughs> She's been all over me of late. As a matter of fact, recently before she left for work, she, she unloaded on me. And I'll never forget what she said just before she slammed the door. She looked at me with knives in her eyes and she said, Phil? And of course I had to correct her because my name's Dave. <laughs> She said, whatever. <laughs> you know what I hate about you? You never do jack around the house. Well, I chewed on that for a while. I was waiting for her there in the hallway when she came home that evening. She walked in and I said, Jesus Christ. Welcome home. <laughs> Tell me now, uh, is that Jack enough for you? Huh? <laughs> oh, thanks, folks. Yeah. Don't you love Jack? I certainly do, too. And I recently wrote a, uh, a brief poem about life's lessons learned. And uh, after I finished it, I thought, who better to deliver this than the worldly and notoriously sardonic Jack Nicholson? And I'd like to leave it tonight. I'd like to leave you with it. It's entitled, The Road Mistaken. <sighs> I shall be telling this with a sigh and with a nod to Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a wood and I. I took the one less traveled by, and now I'm fucking lost. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Our next gentleman has a resume so extensive, I have to read it. Listen to this. Alan Stephen is CEO of Stratus, a company dedicated to the conservation of science and technology into commercial products for the advancement of mankind and the protection of the environment. This next comedian is a different Alan Stephen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, hello. How about another nice round of applause, Rita Rudner? <laughs> Beautiful, poised, charming, everything I'm fucking not. She's a pretty lady. Nice to see you ladies. I thought I locked a trailer. How did you get out? <laughs> One always has a bobby pin, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. It's nice to be here in San Bernardino. I didn't think I was gonna make it. It's lovely here. But according to my attorney, everything's been expunged, so I'm happy, <laughs> very happy about this. Very happy. How are you ladies? Is this your wife? No, girlfriend. 
Your girlfriend, wife couldn't make it tonight, huh? Okay. <laughs> I know how that shit goes. How you doing? Who are you with? Is this your wife? Yeah. A pretty lady. Pretty, pretty lady. Good for you. You married too? You, Santa Claus. <laughs> it's a little hot, huh? A little hot for you this time of the year. <laughs> He's married a very long time, Mr. Santa. I'm married four years. I know it doesn't seem like a long time, but in my mind, I've killed her nine times. <laughs> She thinks I dig law and order. I'm just looking for a plan. <laughs> How come you're always watching that show? Shh, this could be the episode. Make some popcorn and pray. <laughs> Women are very clever people, right? You're a pretty lady too. What's your name? Susan, very pretty. You ever been to a wooded area? <laughs> you ever been so far out in the desert no one could hear you scream? Ever see the trunk of a Cadillac? I'm just flirting with you. <laughs> Women are clever, clever people. And they can get even with you whenever they want. You ever walk down the street, you're having a nice conversation with a lady, and on the opposite side of the street are eight bikers yelling, hey baby, hey bitch, hey! She turns to you and goes, you gonna take that shit? Well, they're talking to you, honey. If you want to kick some ass, I'm willing to wait. <laughs> Women are clever, clever people. And if you think I'm wrong, if you're home tonight with your wife or your girlfriend and you're in bed and the light's still on, whoever gets out of bed to turn off the light, look back, that's the boss. <laughs> Women are giggling. The guys are going, what the fuck's this guy talking about? <laughs> Go home tonight, you'll see. You'll see exactly what I'm fucking talking about. Are you married? How long have you been married? Yes, I figured that was her. You know, the one that was in the car. How long are you married? 54 years. My wife's 20 years younger than me. Never gonna fucking happen. 20 years young, it's hard for me to keep up. I don't give a shit about sex anymore. I just want to know where my glasses are. <laughs> she went out a couple weeks ago and got a tattoo of a corn dog right here. <laughs> Apparently there is enough liquor. It's tough getting old. It's tough getting, how old are you, sir? 76, yeah, I'm at that age where you gotta start getting the prostate exams. Uh, not my favorite thing. Especially, uh, my, my, my doctor's 6'8". <laughs> Let it sink in. 6'8". <laughs> when your finger's bigger than my dick, it's not an exam, it's a fucking rape! <laughs> they ought to bring in a pinch hitter or some shit. 6'8", <laughs> he has the balls to go, hey, I'm gonna put the glove on. The fuck you are! <laughs> Unbelievable, six, eight. <laughs> Linda, what do you do for a living? I'm a realtor, but my name's Lee. You're a realtor? So mostly you just sit in the office going, geez, I wish somebody showed a fuck up. <laughs> this job's starting to suck. <laughs> it's tough being a realtor. Any servicemen here tonight? Oh. Give them a round of applause out there protecting us in three different countries. I respect servicemen. I was almost drafted towards the end of Vietnam, but I was doing a gig in Canada and my car broke down. <laughs> Four years to get a fucking battery. <laughs> Canadians, eh? <laughs> what do you do? I work. You work? <laughs> what are you, fucking nuts? Nobody works. <laughs> What's your job? I work for a division of HP printers. Oh, good for you. You're a young guy. Did you go to school? No. Yeah. I graduated from broadcasting school. Oh, broadcasting school. Yeah, but you're young. You get to use computers. You're very lucky. Very lucky. I'd love to go back to school now. They use computers. When I went to school, there were no computers. You had to think. <laughs> I'd love to go back now. You need an answer? Wait. There it is. 
Shit, when I went to school, all I had was a pencil and the kid next to me. <laughs> and if he would have applied himself, I think I could have been somebody. <laughs> I hated that kid. I had some plans, man. <laughs> Too hot. I've been traveling around the country. I was in Boston. Anybody here from Boston? You live there? That doesn't fucking count, lady. <laughs> Those Boston people have to learn how to speak English. <laughs> Ever been there? I got lost. I asked this hotel guy directions. He looks me in the face and goes, well, you take the first fuck in the road. <laughs> I said, I beg your pardon? He said, you take the first fuck in the road. I said, well, apparently I'm gonna like it here in Boston. <laughs> I waited an hour though. <laughs> oh, God. How are you? How are you? What do you do? I'm a housewife. There's nothing wrong with being a housewife. It's a good biblical job. How many kids? One. One? I take back everything I just said. You made it sound like you're home with nine kids. Get the fuck off of there! Go nap. Tough job as mother, but <laughs> one kid. What do you do? I'm a state of Oh, wherever my finger went. Oh, you're a stay-at-home mom? How many kids? Five. That's the answer! <laughs> Five kids, no one near fucking here. Just lock the door, you know, I'll be back. I'll... I don't have any kids. That's why my wife's 20 years younger than me. God bless her. And what do you do? No, you, lady. The one with the cleavage. I'm sorry, I'm up high. I got the best seat in the house. What do you do? I work for Second Harvest Food Bank. I'm a financial director. You're a financial director. So you and the realtor just must be fucking bored all day long. Don't you have CNN? Nobody has any money, honey. You know you're broke. Thank you, I'm glad I came here. I feel much better. I thought I was depressed for fucking no reason. Unbelievable. What do you do? Chemistry teacher, so you can make shit? Could you get up and meet me in the back? Seriously, cart your ass to the back. I know you got some shit in the glove compartment. I got some shit in the glove compartment. We'll get some Tylenol aspirin from uh, Rita. Before you know it, we'll be bowling buddies. And what do you do, sir? Nothing, I'm in the insurance business. Let me tell you about your fucking business. Insurance business, I don't even get it. What's life insurance? You know, you pay and, and, and to protect your life, then you die. What kind of fucking insurance is that? I want now insurance. Middle of the party, you call up, nah, I'm out of blondes and liquor. No, nah, I'm insured. You'll be very busy if you listen to me. What do you do with the LA hat? Is this your wife? That's not your wife? Oh, okay. How long has she been your girlfriend? 12 years. 12 years. Time to make a decision, Skippy. <laughs> you guys have been real nice. Thank you. is John Fox. He traveled with Rodney Dangerfield for eight years and bravely bases his look on Nick Nolte's mugshot. Please welcome John Fox! Two 
firemen are butt fucking in a smoke filled room. <laughs> and you look like one of them. <laughs> and you look like the other. <laughs> the chief comes up, says, What the hell are you guys doing? He says, Sir, this man has smoke inhalation. <laughs> He said, give him mouth to mouth. He says, I did. How do you think this shit got started? <laughs> My mom told me that joke. <laughs> Nine-year-old couple on their anniversary. Nine-year-old woman comes out of the bathroom completely naked. Her husband sits up. She says, what are you thinking about, big boy? He says, I'm thinking about the first time I saw you naked 50 years ago. I wanted to screw you to death and suck those titties bone dry. He said, what do you think now? He says, I think I did a good job. <laughs> oh, my God. I did a sit-up today. I'm really sore. I called my doctor. He said, you didn't try and do one the first day, did you? I got an aunt that weighs 500 pounds. 500 pounds. She went to a fat farm. <laughs> they gave her a blue ribbon. <laughs> 500 pounds, folks. You're pretty much classified as a fat fuck, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, you could lose 100 pounds. You're still a fat fuck. <laughs> you could lose two. You could lose 300 pounds. <laughs> You'd be me. <laughs> I gave up. Hell, I blew past 50. I said, screw it. Pizza wins. <laughs> I'm not getting laid anymore. Why try and look like it? <laughs> Last time I had a piece of ass was my finger broke through the toilet paper. <laughs> and you don't want seconds on that. <laughs> Getting older sucks. My God, my waistline's 40, my inseam's 30. I'm taller laying down. You know you're getting old when you have dry dreams and wet farts. You know what I'm talking about. I ain't gonna get prettier getting older. My grandfather told me his dick only gets hard in the middle. <laughs> They said it's like shooting pool with a rope. <laughs> he says, you can move your stick, but your balls ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Getting older, I'm doing goofy shit. My God, the other day I whacked off watching Murder, she wrote. <laughs> I'm laying there going, come on, Angela. <laughs> you know who did it. <laughs> You know, you always fucking know. Shouldn't be embarrassed about whacking off. Hell, when I was your age, I used to whack off till air came out. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. When your pecker farts, you've been jacking off too long. Everybody who whacks off, you whack off, don't you, ma'am? Fucking A. <laughs> Home all alone. Brrr. Pull out the pocket rocket. Brrr. Sometimes he gets caught in a lip. Something's burning! You girls get horny. It's not just us dudes. My God, I used to date a stripper. Oh, my. One day she sat on my hand. I thought a horse was eating oats out of my palm. <laughs> I was like, oh, Wilbur. <laughs> I used to date a homeless girl. That was cool. Oh, my God. You could drop her off anywhere. <laughs> Date's over. Get out. <laughs> See you at the park on Sunday. <laughs> I used to date a midget. Oh, my God. I was nuts over her. <laughs> Oh, 
But I'm glad you're really a good crowd because I'm breaking up with my girlfriend this week. We're, oh, my God. You know, relationships. We're at that stage where you know it's over, but you hate to lose cable. <laughs> she called me up the other day. She's, John, the light bulb in the bathroom burnt out, and I don't know how to change it. I said, first, you fill the tub with water. <laughs> I called today, there's no answer. <laughs> I'm not really worried. I can still get the girls. They just don't look good. <laughs> I go to a party now, I look for somebody limping. <laughs> it's easier to cut them from the herd. <laughs> hey, where's Nancy? I don't know. Here's her walker. <laughs> Where'd I lose you at? You guys are really fun. I, I love being here with Rita. I haven't seen her in years. I love being a comic. I used to be a house painter. I was a house painter for five years. Oh, I didn't think I'd ever finish that fucking house. <laughs> I used to be a school teacher. How'd you like to leave your kid with me for six hours a day? <laughs> I used to be a fourth grade teacher. And it was pretty cool. And, you know, I had a pretty good class. And one time this kid came into the class and I was gonna give him a tough question. And his name was Archibald Barisol. I said, Archibald, can you say your name in phonetic syllables for star? He looked at me, he said, hell no. Because <laughs> I needed an example. I said, fair enough. Looked around the room, I said, Mary Smith. Mary Smith stood straight up. She said, my name is Mary Smith. Got your M-A, got your May, got your R-Y, got your Re, got your Mary, got your S-M-I-T-H, you got your Smith, got your Re Smith, you got your May Smith, you got your Mary Smith. I said, very, very good. I said, Archibald? I said, hell no. <laughs> he said, I need an example. I said, fair enough. Looked around the room, I said, Johnny Jones. Johnny Jones was straight up. He said, my name's Johnny Jones. You got your J-O-H-N, you got John. You got your N-Y, you got your knee. You got your Johnny, you got your J-O-N-E-S, you got your Jones. You got your knee Jones, you got your John Jones, you got your Johnny Jones. I said, very, very good. I said, Archibald, he said, you asked for it, fucker. <laughs> he said, my name's Archibald Barisol. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know the punchline. <laughs> you got your A-R-C-H, you got your arch. You got your I, you got your arch I. You got your B-A-L-D, you got your bald. You got your eye bald, you got your arch bald. You got your arch eye bald. <laughs> got your B-A-R-E, you got your bear. You got your bald bear, you got your eye bald bear. You got your arch eye bald bear. Got your ASS, you got your ass, you got your bear ass, you got your bald bear ass. <laughs> you got your eye ball bear ass, you got your arch eye ball bear ass. You got your OL, you got your old, you got your asshole, you got your bear ass hole. You got your bald bear asshole. You got your eye bald bear asshole. You got your arch eye ball bear asshole. I said, very, very good. I will see you all in heaven. Miss Rita Rudner, thank you. Gentlemen, first off, we have Mr. David Gee. Now we have Mr. Alan Stephen and Mr. John Fox. Thank you all. I hope you had a nice evening. Good night. Oh, and you worked with Roddy Dangerfield for a long time too. Uh, for eight years, I, I know it's the voice of the pig in the cartoon Rover Dangerfield. It's typecasting. Don't fuck with it. I graduated from Jack Betty Junior High School, and he would show up, and he would sign my high school diploma as Jack Benny's signature. How cool That's is that? Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs>